Hello and welcome to Talking Books. I'm Jill de Villiers. My guest today is a prolific, best-selling and prize-winning British historian and fiction writer. His books have been published in 48 languages. His magnificent book, Jerusalem, kept me spellbound through its well over 600 pages. Simon Seabag Montefiore joins me today to talk about his latest book, Written in History, Letters That Changed the World. Welcome, Simon, and thanks so much for coming in and Good chatting to you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Lovely to be here. Oh. Tell me about the letters. Why did you decide to write this book, put together this book? Um, I, I've always used great correspondences to write all my books, you know, and I've, I've researched them in the archives. In Jerusalem, for example, is based on a lot of letters. And so my publisher said to me, like, why don't you produce um, an anthology of your favourite letters? And so I was delighted to do it, and it's just been a great joy to, to collect them and select them. And, you know, in some ways it's got a sort of serious historical mission. It's to tell people about stories and times that they should know. But in other ways it's just meant to be a great entertainment, a delicious feast that anyone can dip into. And hopefully it will attract people who aren't necessarily interested in, in history. That's exactly right. I mean, I wanted it. The great thing about these anthologies is people give it as presents. Um, it, I mean, I was very surprised because I just did it for sort of fun, really. But it's sold all over the world now. And so hence I'm here. Um, and it's coming out in America and all sorts of country, you know, foreign countries. The Chinese are publishing it, the Dutch, the... I mean, you name it, everyone's publishing it now, so it's, it's exciting. Oh. Now, this is the hardcover. You're also bringing out um, a paperback, which will be updated in some sense. Well, I'm putting in a few more letters, which mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't resist, because there were a few that I was dying to put in, but they wouldn't let me. They wanted to keep it short. But I'm just adding five letters. I mean, some of them are really fascinating. Like, one of them um, is the advice of, um, of, of Lorenzo de' Medici to his son, going off to be the si a 16-year-old cardinal in Rome and telling him to keep away from the flesh pots. Mm -hmm. And another is an amazing letter from Baba, the, the, the Mughal emperor of India, talking about how he survived an assassination attempt, what it is like to be almost assassinated. Mm -hmm. So there's some great letters in mm -hmm. there. And I put in Khrushchev's letters with Kennedy as well. Mm -hmm. There's some very long letters and some very brief ones yes. as well. And, and some dating way back to the Egyptian uh, yes. times and, and more modern ones. Can you, you tell me about the oldest letter that's in I think here? the oldest one is Ramesses the Great. Mm -hmm. And they were written on clay. And um, they were discovered in, in, a, in a town that was excavated you know, in the 20th century. And they found um, hundreds of these um, diplomatic letters. And so that's from about 1245, 43, something like that, BC. And then, of course, you've got all the way, you come all the way up to Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is to have like different tones. Some are long, some are short, some are one line, some are very sexy, some are very erotic, some are tragic. Mm -hmm. the, the, that's the fun of it. Oh. So what, which one would you say is your favorite? Um, I love, um, God, I, of course, the trouble is they're all my favorites. <laughs> I'm just looking at the sort of list here. I mean, I love, I love Simon Bolivar's letters with his, with his mistress, um, Manuela. I love her letter, which is all about how boring Englishmen are <laughs> and how, how bad they are as lovers and friends and everything. So that's very funny. But, you know, there are, I love the Catherine the Great letters. Mm -hmm. Um, I love Frida Kahlo's mm. love letters. Oh, Frida Kahlo is one of my favorite um, artists. And, yes. and the, the letter that she writes there to Diego Rivera is, is very passionate mm. and very evocative. I don't know if you would like to... Sure. Try to just grab present. it. Yes, just Shall grab, just grab, it, grab and, it and, we, and we read might. us a little bit. I'll read a bit because it's one of the few I can find easily because I know it's near the beginning. Here we are. So this is, this is um, the amazing um, Frida Kahlo. And she just, she's writing to Diego Rivera, who's the greatest Mexican artist as well. And she says, Diego, nothing compares to your hands, nothing like the green gold of your eyes. My body is filled with you for days and days. You are the mirror of the night, the violent flash of lightning, the dampness of the earth. The hollow of your armpits is my shelter. My fingers touch your blood. All my joy is to feel life spring from your flower fountain that mine keeps to fill all the paths of my nerves, which are all yours. Oh, that's just so Rather stunning. Rather lovely, it's isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. And I mean, I mean um, it's filled with kind of all sorts of letters, but that's, that's one of the lovely ones. Mm. 
Shall I put it back? Yes, thank Shall you. Shall I put it back into position? And, and then another a very passionate love affair was mm. that of Catherine the Great and Potemkin. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, one? I mean, those are letters that are just extraordinary. And um, I've written a whole book about their relationship, Catherine the Great and Potemkin, which was my first big history book, actually. So these letters are actually letters that I actually saw in, uh, actually saw in re you know, the, real, the real version of them, the originals, if you like. Um, Look, theirs was the great sort of one of the great sort of sexual, romantic, political partnerships of history. They were incredibly successful. They were incredibly talented, and the letters are extraordinary. And many of them are like kind of emails. Um, they're love letters, and as their relationship goes on, they become great letters of politics and power and statesmanship. So they're amazing. Um, but there, there are many others in here too. I'm just trying to think. I mean. I mean, if you're very shock shockable, you don't read the Mozart letter because <laughs> it's all about bodily oh. functions, which oh. I don't think we can say on oh. CNBC. <laughs> and, um, and of course, you know, there's Michelangelo, um, there's Winston Churchill, there's Anais mm. Nin. So we've got, every, we've got everybody in here, Voltaire. Mm. Um, altogether, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a mix. I mean, mm -hmm. there are also some letters that are, you know, very public, um, like Mao Zedong launching the Cultural Revolution. Um, there are letters written quite officially, like, for example, Columbus writing to the, the king and queen of Spain, t telling them about America. Fascinating, very long letter and very mm. interesting insight yeah. as well into what, how he saw the world that he but it encountered. Was the, the, the original mm -hmm. was much longer, but mm -hmm. I've cut everything down so it's kind of easy to read for everybody. Mm -hmm. There's Alexander Hamilton's letters that led to the duel. Um, there's Pushkin's letter that led to the duel. So there's sort of, um, there, are, there are a lot of tragic letters in here. There are letters about death. I mean, one of my favorites, actually, I think one of my great favorites is Leonard Cohen's letter. Oh, yes. Do yeah. you want to maybe read, I read that, that one as That's well? That's a wonderful that is letter. also a stunning Because Leonard Cohen, you know, it's just a beautiful letter. Now, this is, um, let me just find it. It's also a lovely Churchill letter, but let me see. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, here we are. Leonard Cohen to, to Marianne Illen, and she was his great lover and, and, and girlfriend and muse during the 60s when he wrote many of his great songs, like So Long Marianne, named after her. When he, in 2016, she's dying of leukemia, and he, oh, on the night she's going to die, he writes this letter, and she receives it just in time and listens and hears it and smiles and, and, uh, before she passes. Mm -hmm. So this is the letter. Dearest Marianne, I'm just a little bit behind you, close enough to take your hand. This old body has given up, as yours has too, and the eviction notice is, is on its way any day now. I've never forgotten your love and your beauty, but you know that. I don't have to say more. Safe travels, old friend. See you down the road. Endless love and gratitude, Leonard. Mm. It's a lovely beautiful, one. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. When we read that in, you know, when we read that, um, either, sometimes we do, we've done quite a lot of um, great sessions where actors play the letters, mm. read the letters, and I comment on them. And um, when they read that, everyone, everyone sighs. Aww. Yes. Mm. And... That's, that's lovely. So, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of a, the aim is just to have something, you know, just like a delicatessen of words mm -hmm. and um, that, anyone, that anyone can dip into. Mm -hmm. So you can read it from cover to cover mm -hmm. or you can just open it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So while we also have Jerusalem yes. on, on the table, there's a letter from Balfour to Lord Rothschild, yes. which is um, a very famous letter as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of these letters are very political. There's the letter that started World War I, the blank check letter, famous blank check mm -hmm. letter. Um, there's Jacques from Emile Zola, mm -hmm. and yes, the Balfour Declaration was a letter from the Foreign Secretary of the Balfour to Lord Rothschild, the leader of the Jewish community mm -hmm. in England. And of course, that's a letter that changed the world totally. Um, it created the new, it helped create the modern Middle East. And you know, it's great to see that Jerusalem there because I'm I'm updating it now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to produce a sort of I've rewritten the end to bring it up to date of the last ten years. So it's going to be have Donald Trump and Netanyahu and oh. SBS and all these characters in it, and you know, um, so um, that will be that will be coming out in, in the autumn mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Now, uh, tell me about the, the that blank check letter. Tell us a little bit more about that. Not everybody knows no. about that. Well, I think school children are told about mm -hmm. it because we always learnt about it, but they've never seen the full letter. Mm -hmm. And the blank check letter is the letter given by the Kaiser of Germany to the, to the Emperor of uh, Austria-Hungary to say that he would back him if it came to war. So that, 
Austria-Hungary couldn't move without the blank check. And basically they said, whatever you do, um, we'll back you. So that's why it's called a blank check. And they filled in the blank check, and that cost 25 million people mm. their lives. Mm. So it's the letter that started World War I. So, so some of these letters really are letters that immediately changed the world. You know, they're, they're letters of war and peace. Um, and like I said, there's a Donald Trump letter with Kim Jong-un also in there, yeah. which is fun. But it's going to be nice having the Jerusalem um, redone, mm -hmm. you know, as well. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's going to be refreshed. Oh, so I'm looking forward to that one as well to to see that and, and get it. Simon, thank you so much for coming in and chatting to us about your book. And um, this is Simon Seabag Montefiore. His latest book on the shelves is Written in History: Letters That Changed the World. Thanks for watching and goodbye.